evening. I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, February 9th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, we are accepting public participation at this meeting and members of the public can attend in person or watch or listen to the meeting live via channel four at home or at lhcaz.gov TV. We also are receiving a public comment. You can email public comment to the city clerk at cityclerk at lhcaz.gov to be read into the record if you cannot attend. We will now have an invocation from Dr. David Bybee from the Community Presbyterian Church. I guess we can take this one down. I just barely got here in time. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, I come uh, representing Community Presbyterian Church and uh, also the London Bridge Christian Churches, the president of the Ministerial Association. Always an honor to come here and to pray and uh, uh, for our city, and for our council, and I do think our council is doing, as I look around the city, I think they're doing a great job. Let's pray. Great God and everlasting Father, creator of the heavens and earth, we this evening at the Lake Havasu City Council humbly come before you. First, we want to honor you, and then we desire your wisdom in decisions made. As we are blessed being surrounded by the beauty of the lake, the desert mountains, so much may we in this oasis uh, always honor you, creator, redeemer, source of life, and as Jesus said and demonstrated, I was dead, but look, I am alive and hold the keys of life, death, and the grave, Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Help us all to enjoy life here in Lake Havasu and to perceive its deeper meaning, and may your light shine tonight and life daily in Lake Havasu. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. We'll now have the Pledge of Allegiance for, uh, led by Stephanie Whitaker from the Kiwanis Club. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And Stephanie, if you'd like to uh, share a little bit about uh, the Kiwanis Club and the good work they do in our community. I would love to. And thank you so much for inviting us here today and to my fellow, well, my fellow Kiwanians on the council. And Cal, thank you for the invitation. Uh, we do have some quite exciting things coming up. Uh, we are going to be having a community builders club that has already been approved by Kiwanis International, so that should be starting soon. Uh, we are going to be meeting here at a local you know, public place where everybody can go to. Um, it's going to be open to all of the kids in fourth through eighth grade, regardless of what school they go to. So it's very, very exciting. Um, we have our flag day that's coming up on President's Day where we're going to put out flags in the morning and then we'll pick them up at dusk. Dusk, yes. <laughs> Sorry, get confused sometimes. Um, but anyway, we have over, Dave, how many subscribers do we have right now? About 650. 650. So that's a lot of flags that we put out. We all band together, and it's a lot of fun um, in the wee hours of the morning. So that's about what we've got going on. We also have a social coming up at the Speedway in April, so that's going to be really, really exciting too. No, March. I lied. March. So thank you so much for having us, and look forward to seeing you in the future. Great. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Uh, it's always uh, the flag days that are um, celebrated by your club is always one of my favorite days. When I pull out my driveway, there's seven, six of them, seven of them. Yeah, I pull out my driveway and I see that flag there. It always puts a, a bright smile on my face. So thank you for all the good work you do in our community. And thank you for being here. And thank you to all the members of the club that are here as well. So. Thank you, Cal. All right. Uh, we'll now go on to item four on the agenda, the roll call. Ms. Williams, if you could please call the roll. Council members, Nancy Campbell. Here. Jim Dolan. Present. David Lane. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Cameron Moses. Here. Vice Mayor Jenny Koch. Here. Mayor Kalshihi. Here. Thank you. Thank you. 
We'll now move on to item five on the agenda, which is the call to the public. This is the opportunity where citizens have to address the city council on any matter within the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. Uh, your comments will be limited to three minutes or less. There will be a light indicator box next to Miss Williams. Green means you have three minutes. Yellow means you have one minute remaining and red means that the three minutes is up. Again, it's with any item that was in the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. Uh, since the item that you're going to be speaking about probably will not be on the agenda, we cannot have a two-way conversation, uh, but we'll listen intently uh, to whatever comments you have. As I mentioned earlier, we do receive public comment via written uh, email at cityclerk at lhcaz.gov uh, prior to the meeting. Uh, so you don't have to sign up to speak a call to the public, but we did have uh, Ms. Christine Simmons uh, sign up. So we'll start with you, Christine, if you can make your way to the podium. Wonderful. Yes. Hello, thank you. Welcome, Mayor and City Council. I'm going to read tonight. Usually I read from the heart, but I'm reading tonight because I have lots of information for you. Excellent. Okay. Um, you received a flyer about our reminder of our next desert cleanup day. It's the last weekend in March. Kawana. <laughs> 27th and 28th, we're going to meet at Paso de Oro and Colt Drive at the Desert Entrance from 8.30 to 3.30 both days. It would be great for all of you to stop by and say hello to all our wonderful volunteers uh, that are removing city trash from our desert. It really is city trash. Um, last year we filled a huge dumpster and BLM paid for our fees. Um, I was reading this weekend the Lake Havasu City 2016 general plan. Lots of information and full of lots of goals to accomplish. Our community is described as a desert community, and the general plan described natural corridors. They link parks and amenities together. These corridors are developed and or are dedicated for one or more modes of recreational travel, such as walking, jogging, biking, inline skating, and horseback riding. Uh, these linear parks and trails serve the overall community and destinations. Not my words. It's right from your 2016 general plan. There's a great map included on this site that shows the mountain protection areas, the boundary lines for development, and with the expansion of our city and new housing developments, these recreational corridors need to be preserved and set aside for future development. Our open spaces are, as you know, disappearing and are being abused. Our natural desert habitat, plants, and wildlife. In 2000, Maricopa County formed the Maricopa County Trail Commission. They developed a regional trail system, a comprehensive non-motorized trail system with future corridors. This trail system was completed in three phases. Took them 15 more years to do it. This trail system includes hiking and riding trails. The city of Prescott has a similar trail system encircling their entire city. Havasu City needs to be proactive in preserving safe trails for corridors. You wonder why I wear yellow? Because it's mellow yellow, and it's also the sign for color for caution, and we want to be safe out there with our recreational shooters. We want to be seen. So uh, I'm thankful for your noise ordinance that you're putting forth and the nice, quiet respect for our neighborhoods. Apache Junction banned Tannerite. Just remember the base of a boombox doesn't compare to Tannerite. Our explosions shake our homes, terrify our animals. It's banned on the BLM, a thousand dollar fine for using it, and no shooting is allowed on state lands. And if you're out in the desert, get an Avenza app. It's free, A-V-E-N-Z-A. -E you can put it on your phone and it lets you know, <gasps> you're on BLM land. You're on state land because it's really hard to tell out there. And naturally, if we put signs out there, they get shot up. So, you know, get the Avenza app so you know. So, also, I just, I don't want to stop the shooting. I'm an NRA member, <laughs> okay? But we need to have a safe corridor for the shooters. Thank you. Thank you. Would, an would anyone else like to address the city council at the call to the public? If so, you just make your way to the podium and state your name for the record. Seeing none, we'll close the in-person call to the public. Uh, Ms. Williams, did we re receive any comments uh, written? 
Yes, one comment was received on Saturday, February 6, 2020, one with the subject line of COVID vaccine. Latest report from LA Herald indicates we are third from bottom in counties receiving vaccines. We have three members in FAM that are 65 plus and 75 plus, and myself in the grocery industry. I've had to search for and register at Safeway and Hospital, and yet after three weeks, still no vaccine. What is the mayor and city council doing to support our community? Submitted by Sherry Browning. Thank you. All right, I'll go ahead and close, close the call to the public at this time. We'll move on to item six, which is the consent agenda. Would any of the council members like to remove any of the items for separate discussion? Mayor. Yeah, Vice Mayor Koch. Motion. Yes. I move to accept the con consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Koch and a second from Council Member Lane. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Council Member Lane? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item seven, correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager report. Uh, first, we'll start with item 7.1, the investment report as of uh, December 31st. Uh, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this is just the- and Ms. Olson, if you could just stop report. for a quick second, could we change the screen in the back to the Zoom screen? Thank you. All right. All right, Ms. Okay. Olson, welcome. All right, thank you. Um, this is the quarterly report for the period ending December 31st of 2020. It's very similar to the last quarterly report. There hasn't been a lot of um, change, especially material change. Um, just a reminder though, even though the balance of cash that's been invested is high, there's only a fraction of that is in the general fund, meaning that all of the other funds um, are restricted the general fund is the least restricted, and yet even the balance that, that's in cash still has commitments that have to be paid against that cash. So just a quick reminder that the balance isn't an indication of the total revenues there. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, great, thank you. Are there any questions from any members of the council? All right, thank you, Ms. Olson. Uh, we'll move on to item 7.2 which uh, Ms. Williams, if you uh, would like to announce the vacancies on the Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. Mayor and City Council, there are several vacancies on Lake Havasu City Board, Committees, and Commissions. The following is a listing of those vacancies. Airport Advisory Board, one alternate pilot member. Board of Adjustment, four regular members, and three alternate members. Anyone interested can pick up an application packet at City Hall, and they are also available on the city's website at www.lhcaz.gov. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Item 7.3 is the city, ma city manager's report. Mr. Knudsen. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Since last we met, there has been uh, two uh, proclamation pres presentations by uh, you, uh, Mayor Sheehy, on February 1st. Uh, you and Councilmember Moses presented a proclamation to the school district counselors to celebrate National School Counseling Week, February 1st through February 5th. And on February 4th, Mayor, you visit our Lady of the Lake Catholic Church to present a proclamation to celebrate Catholic Schools Week, which is January 31st through February 6th. Uh, where the city is hosting a public workshop on Friday, February 19th. It'll be held at the community center to gather public input for the proposed options for our water and our sewer rates. On the slide there, it talks about water rates, but it's our water and sewer rates. These are the conversations we had at the last uh, council annual planning session. And so we'll be seeking input from the public. So please come and join us about uh, some of the options as we move forward in, in terms of uh, how this, uh, um, how our winter averaging works and uh, so forth and so on. So please, uh, please join us, learn about the process, the proposed rates and, and ask, uh, ask questions. It'll be come and go, so we'll have some uh, presentations throughout that uh, time frame from three to six. I think we'll have a presentation around three, and again at four, and again at five. So um, feel free to stop in anytime uh, between three and six. And lastly, uh, our update on the COVID cases uh, since uh, uh, the last council meeting, uh, we have uh, 444 new cases. This information is as of February 8th, and you can see the breakdown in the slide on the screen. 
Uh, currently, there are 337 individuals in Lake Havasu City who, that, have, that are in self-quarantine or, or uh, have a COVID, reported COVID case, and 4,790 that have completed the quarantine in Lake Havasu City. Uh, so with, with that, Mayor and Council, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Do any members of the Council have any questions for Mr. Knudsen? All right, we'll move on to item eight, our public hearings. I am going to uh, recuse myself for item 8.1 and turn it over to Vice Mayor Koch. I am employed by the applicant on item 8.1. So, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Item number 8.1 is adopt resolution number 21-3471, granting a three-year extension of time for plan development. Number 08-00200003 Millennium Plaza Project on a 4.42 acre parcel located at 1440 McCulloch Boulevard North. Stewart. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, this item before you is a, uh, was known as the Millennium Plan Development, which was originally approved in 2008. Uh, the development code allows um, property owners of plan developments like this to, to request three-year extensions uh, in the event that they don't substantially complete the project. Uh, in this case, I don't believe it's been started at all, uh, but this particular PD has asked for uh, previous extensions in 2011, 15, and 18. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to share my screen here. This, this is new to me, so we'll see if it works. hope that's working for you. I can't, I can't see it, but um, this is a, a map of uh, a site plan for the original development. Uh, this is uh, London, or this is uh, the, um, the London Bridge. We have the Bridgewater Channel here. The proposed building uh, is this horseshoe shape uh, development here. It's about 49,000 square feet of uh, commercial, and it includes 88 uh, residential units. And uh, the, the property owner uh, should be in attendance uh, if you have any questions for him. Uh, but uh, that's all I have, and I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Are there any questions from Council? Seeing none, I'll open it up for the public. Do we have any? Make your way to the podium and Go ahead. I'm challenged with directions, so I don't know. Is this going to be on the island? No, this is actually along uh, along the Bridgewater Channel. Okay, good, because I was thinking we definitely would need that second bridge. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? not seeing none I'll bring it back to council Are there any further council comments Kelly did we have any written no written comments okay madam vice mayor councilman lane a motion please I move to adopt resolution number 21-3471 granting a three-year extension of plan development number 08-0020000 Three, known as the Millennium Plaza Project, located at 1440 McCulloch Boulevard North. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any other comments? Kelly, can you call for the roll? Councilmember Lynn? Aye. Motion carries with six council members voting aye and one council member recusal. Thank you, Vice Mayor Koch. And congratulations to the applicant. Uh, moving on to item 8.2 is adopt resolution number 21-3474, appointing city council members to the Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization's Executive Board. Uh, Ms. Gary. Good evening, Mayor and Council. 
A little bit of information on an MPO before we get to the vote. A Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, is a federally mandated and federally funded transportation policy-making organization made up of representatives from local government and governmental transportation authorities. The Federal Aid Highway Act of 1962 requires the formation of an MPO for any urbanized area with a population greater than 50,000. Federal funding for transportation projects and programs are channeled through this planning process. Congress created MPOs in order to ensure that existing future uh, expenditures of governmental funds for transportation projects and programs are based on continuing, cooperative, and comprehensive planning processes. In 2010, the census reflected that the city's population surpassed the 50,000 population threshold, and thus Lake Havasu MPO was created. The Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization planning area includes Lake Havasu City, the Mojave County areas north of the city limits known as Desert Hills, Havasu Gardens, Crystal Beach, and the Mojave County area south of the city known as Horizon 6, all of which are approximately 100 square miles. The Lake Havasu MPO is administered by an executive board comprised of three elected officials from Lake Havasu City, one representative from the Mojave County Board of Supervisors, and one representative from the Arizona State Transportation Board. Due to membership changes on the city council, it's necessary to revise the current city council appointments to the Lake Havasu MPO executive board. This item was discussed recently at the city council planning session, and it was suggested that Mayor Sheehy, Vice Mayor Koch, and Councilmember Lane should serve as executive board members, and Councilmember Moses be appointed as the alternate. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Gary. Do uh, you have any questions of Ms. Gary? Any members of the council? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and we did not receive any written comments on this item. Uh, bring it back to council for uh, d further discussion or a motion. I'll make a couple of suggestions. I'm going to adopt. I move to adopt resolution number 21 3474, appointing city council members to the Lake Havasu City. Metropolitan Planning Organization, Executive Board. I'll second that. We have a motion from Councilmember Moses and a second from Councilmember Campbell. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Councilmember Lynn? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.3 is introduce ordinance number 21-1251, amending Lake Havasu City Code Chapter 9.30, noise, and section 14.04.09, operation and maintenance standards, to include amplified sound reproduction device definition and C-band level measurements and changes to measuring criteria and allowable noise levels. Mr. Kalislawski. Good evening, Mayor. Well, this is an amendment to the current noise ordinance which would include the addition of the C-scale band. The C-scale will be able to pick up low-level noise, such as bass noise, uh, which currently isn't being detected with use of the A-scale band. Uh, by adding the C-scale, it will give officers another tool uh, to help, them help residents deal with issues pertaining to noise, uh, especially as it pertains to short-term rent. Uh, this amendment would only impact residential noise levels and would have no uh, change uh, to commercial or manufacturing noise levels. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of council? Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councilmember Dolan. I have one. I know in the past there's been an issue of where they have to take the recording from. Um, does this change? I know when they say, well, my bedroom, I can hear the neighbors next door, and they've had to actually go into the bedroom. Does this um, make changes to that where they can just do it anywhere on site? Yeah, Mr. Kozlowski. Yes, it does. It, it allows the officer to determine best location uh, to take that noise level. And I had a question. Yeah, Councilmember Moses. Uh, does this affect uh, the businesses on Main Street or you know down there near the channel right now? This is strictly residential. This is strictly residential. Uh, the noise levels are not changing for commercial or manufacturing. Thank you. Yeah, so our existing noise ordinance, it separates out uh, residential, commercial, there's three, uh, industrial, there's three different zones. And so this only is impacting uh, residential areas. So is our commercial, does our commercial measure the C-band level measurements as well? Uh, uh, it, it, it will, but the, the levels won't change. Okay. The, 
they'll be we've measured 60 decibel levels from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and 70 decibel levels from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. So just to clarify, so the, it will apply to the commercial um, businesses on the C-band. So now we will be using this device to pick up the C-band, so, but the decibel level stay the same, but it will be used to pick up the C-band. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on the C-band, then in the commercial, what uh, those numbers, they weren't, there, they weren't there before. So what are, how is that determined? For C-band levels for the manufacturing residential, it strictly goes off of uh, the frequency of the noise. Uh, so for the A scale, you're picking up the higher frequency. The C scale, you pick the lower frequency noise. Uh, so based off of um, what you've seen in other communities, uh, those levels are pretty standard. So on the so the C scale that this is will be new then for businesses on on the C scale portion, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's not how I understood it when I was reading through the council communication. So I, I thought it had to do just with residential. Um, I didn't realize that it had. Um, so I actually don't know how I feel about it because I don't know what it means because I didn't prepare for 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 that. So what does the C scale mean when it comes to the commercial side? Of uh, what what does that do for noise? I know you all did some readings, but yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I can, uh, Chief Doyle, um, uh, we uh, we put a uh, decibel re uh, reader and, and the C scale into the officers' hands and and uh, uh, made several trips around the community, including our commercial area. So maybe uh, Chief Doyle, if you could speak to, to that and what we learned. Yeah, Mayor Council, um, one of the frequent complaints we get uh, when we show up is really uh, finding people the base is disturbing people in their residences. Uh, we show up, we don't pick up the base previously just using the A scale, and we'd say, hey, this falls within uh, the noise ordinance, uh, but the base is extreme. So primarily, it's going to help us in the, in the residential area. Uh, what we do find is that on the C scale, it will, it will rate a little higher. So um, it could range anywhere from 10 decibels uh, above the A scale all the way up to 20 really depends on the type of music and it's kind of what we were finding is what's the type of music it's a very heavy bass music with that kind of deep I don't know what you'd call it that thumping um, that will pick up anywhere from 10 decibels to 20 decibels higher than the a scale would um, I think it's interesting to note that uh, going back and looking at our noise so we ran on roughly a thousand noise complaints in 2020 um, very, very few of those noise complaints are actually coming from our, our commercial uh, uh, establishments. Uh, over the years, with when we instituted this noise ordinance, we worked uh, very closely with a lot of our bars, especially on Main Street, and then obviously our uh, um, probably our, one of the largest outdoor nightclubs in the Colorado River being Kokomo. Um, we've worked with them, and they've done a lot of engineering. Uh, to direct their sound and to set their limits. So we actually get um, very few, I, I want to say overall with our bars on Main Street and including uh, um, um, in the channel, we've probably seen maybe 20 to 25 complaints out of the thousand. The majority of those complaints are all coming from the residential area. In fact, some of our um, a great example would be Kingsview Condos has more noise complaints originating within the condos than we have from all our clubs and our bars in the city. The rest are we did a, a pin map and um, basically they're scattered throughout the whole city. About approximately 300 of those noise complaints we could absolutely attribute to vacation rentals is just another topic. But that's to answer the question on the C scale um, it's gonna it's gonna range everywhere from uh, 10 decibels to 20 decibels higher than the uh, A scale. Yeah, so I'm familiar with uh, like the 60 decibel reading. You're saying then that it would be um, on that decibel reading, it would be 70 to 80? Well, again, it just depends on, on the music that's being played on how heavy the bass is. If they're, if they're going real heavy on the bass, then um, 
it, it's going to be higher. And typically what you find on a lot of the complaints, it's the base that's actually uh, drawing the complaint. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what people are feeling inside their house. If you ever have one of those cars drive by the street in the house, you're, you're hearing them from quite a distance and you're, you're picking up the base and, and not the A scale ratings. So then everything will be measured on the C scale going forward? If, if this is yeah, we'll do tonight. both. We'll do A scale, C scale. Okay. All right. Yeah, so if, uh, just so I, cause I understand with the readings, I just want to make sure if it, if it was 60 and I, I was to read it the same way I read it today with with the decibel reading, it would be 70, like at that 10, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., it would be 70 to 80 on that if measured by the C scale as far as, as volume or, or noise. I'm sorry, I don't know if I so fully so on the, the um, question. It, it, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. It's saying that there's uh, 60 decibels. What the if we were to adopt this tonight um, with the C scale, like just the normal decibel readers that everyone has now, because that's the way we measure it. I'm trying to figure out what that difference is. Is, is, is are we having to turn on the volume everywhere around town? <laughs> so the C scale. I'm trying. To, let me flip through here and find where he lists. So, yeah, it, basically the, it's going to be the decibels that are outlined in the proposed noise ordinance. So it, it spells out you have a scale f uh, for the A scale, and then you have a separate special noise sources. Uh, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. you have 70 decibels, which is uh, equivalent to what they have on the A scale. So basically they're, ba they're, they're going to have to hold their C scale and hold their base down is yeah, what it's going to be. And, and the thing is, they can engineer a lot of that. They can turn the base down a little bit. Um, they all they all have their own decimeters, and uh, we'll also work with them so they can set their equipment. All right, thank you. Did, any other questions? Uh, Councilmember Lane? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Ahead. And then we'll go to Councilmember Campbell. Thank you. And I just wanted to clarify for the public, when you're taking these readings, you're not taking the readings at the source of the music, but at the complaint location. Correct, correct. So, and, and I will point out that, so w we went, oh, since this process started, we've been going to uh, outside the, the uh, local clubs and we've been taking the readings from right outside those clubs. So when I say we were picking up a 10 to 20% increase over the A scale and the C scale, that's from right outside the club too. So we were just trying to get a sense of uh, what's the difference between the A scale and the C scale, and what's that gonna look like? Mayor, yes. um, I have a question. It seems, did this get updated or changed? Because I know we were getting some things through emails previously before, and I remember a lot of exclusions involved, including motorcycles and other things, and it seems like it's quite a bit different. It even brings in a watercraft noise emitted, um, and including uh, Arizona Administrative Code. I, I know I read all about it, and I remember having a lot of exclusions. Is this did it get updated in the last day or two, or is this the same one that you submitted to me through that? Okay. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, comes from I have a question. Um, yes. I know one of the biggest complaints we get from the um, vacation rentals is noise, um, and of course we all know, unfortunately, we can't regulate. Airbnbs because the state has decided that's their ballpark, not ours. Um, but one thing I like about this is it doesn't differentiate from a vacation rental. It's just it's more of a nuisance neighbor issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like the fact that you know if you have that same house that gets the calls weekend after weekend after weekend, um, we're going to be returning to them. How does the, how does this work as far as first fine or first warning versus? Fines and how do the how does this, I didn't see anything in it as far as the fines how do those work because I think that's something that is going to be very important and how it plays out to the VRBO behind you that constantly every single weekend gets a phone call and right so basically what's our enforcement philosophy versus and then what the how much are the fees yeah. for example or what are the f and then the, the fines how much are the fines do they per if you're if you hit the same house weekend after weekend after weekend. Do the fees go up, or is it yeah, the same? Strictly as far as the noise ordinance goes, that's a, that's handled by the court. Uh, but our enforcement philosophy it's it's a, it is a, a little different for a vacation rental because we've always had an enforcement philosophy of attempting to gain compliance uh, prior to taking an enforcement action. Unfortunately, with the vacation rental, what we're seeing is this weekend I you give a warning. Well, it's different people the next weekend. And it's constantly different people. So if you're constantly giving them warnings, um, 
they just leave and never come back and then there's the next group that does the same thing so and then our residents suffer and the neighbors suffer that that's around them so uh, what we're really looking at is when we show up if you're shooting off fireworks at 1 a.m if you're blasting your music in a residential neighbor at 1 a.m you're not we're we're going to end the end the warnings if you're just if it's outrageous now if we get a call at nine o'clock because um, small children are playing in the pool and laughing and having a good time that's some discretion there but uh, I just had a, a, a discussion with my my patrol division specifically about if it's these egregious ones then they don't deserve a complaint uh, we need to uh, handle it and take care of it there and, and hopefully we're going to have some tools if this current legislation uh, working through the state can give us some of the tools back um, to help uh, regulate these a little bit um, it'd be nice to get our old ordinance uh, our old vacation rental ordinance back it works so well that they did away with it um, but government but yeah we're we're, we're going to be uh, um, taking a much stronger stance on uh, especially with the vacation rentals but th the same criteria as far as the noise goes with any any residential area but Again, the problem with trying to gain compliance is we're dealing with different people every time we show up at the same residence. Right. And that is my concern with a, you know, the limited um, force we have to do all the things we need to do, showing up, giving warnings to people over and over again doesn't seem to make much sense. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah. Mayor, can I add on to that for Councilmember Dolan? Uh, yeah. Yes. For the penalties specifically under the noise code, it is $100 for the first offense, $250 for the second offense, and then $500 for the third and all subsequent offenses. But when we're dealing with a short-term rental, then it also falls into that penalty scheme in the short-term rentals where it starts to escalate, and then we have other tools in that box as well. So now is that per person or is that per address? Can they come back a second time? And, oh, now my wife's music is too Per loud the person that's cited would, okay. would incur the fine but then there's also the ability for the homeowner with the uh, vacation so Louis is now with an Airbnb. If we come back the next week, we start at 100 every single time. If it's a new renter in there. Probably under the noise ordinance, but okay. under but under the short-term rental, then that goes for the property. So okay. that would start. Perfect. Thank you. And Mayor, I just wanted to clarify, this was dated back January 8th. It's the original, so I just wanted to let you know that Nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Moses? You mentioned taking readings outside the, when you were testing it. You were taking readings outside of the bars at various locations around town and stuff like that. Were they falling within range then, w within these new guidelines, or would they be in violation? They, they were with the A scale. They, they were a little over in a the uh, over. C scale. But, but if you take those readings, more than likely, if you take those readings from a complaint house, that it would be within. Okay. Yes, because they don't have uh, typically any complaints in the past that we would get from the downtown uh, Main Street uh, bars. We're talking, you know, two, three blocks away. Yeah. So, yeah. And then one more question, if, uh, if you don't mind. You mentioned that you respond to a lot of vacation rentals. Do you track which noise complaints are vacation rentals versus just somebody's birthday you yes. know a, a local's birthday yes so we document in, in if it's a vacation rental okay and you and you said you had a thousand noise complaints over the last year how many of those were uh, off we had top like nine head? i can tell you exactly about a third of them are actual so um 689 were just uh, regular residences slash businesses mm -hmm. and then 245 of those were vac attributed to vacation rentals Thank you, Chief. That we knew of. There could be more than that, right. but ones we could specifically say were a vacation rental. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from Council? Okay, so the intent here is obviously to help with the residential uh, noise complaints that we're receiving at, at, uh, at large areas. So the intent is not to impact uh, the business community or entertainment zones. And that's where I was just initially surprised because uh, I was focused more on the residential side um, until th those comments were made. So um, that the intent uh, remains the same. And I think this will be one solution to help with those short term rentals and some of those citizens that are having to experience this day after day or weekend after weekend. So uh, thank you for those uh, um, answering those questions, Chief and, and Mr. Kozlowski. Uh, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Yeah, Christine, just make your way to the podium. Chief. 
Chief, I don't know. I know you have a special task force that comes up and monitors our shooting and our Tannerite. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tested it on a scale, the A scale or the C scale, but I'm sure it's off the charts. It is heard all over the city, north side, south side. I met a lady tonight. She says, now I know what it is, those booms, and she's by the high school. So think about Apache Junction. There's a reason they banned it, because it far exceeds any boom box. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, please just make your way to the podium. State your name for the record. Uh, Robert Hopkins. Yeah, Robert, could you just uh, bring the microphone up just to thank you so the folks at home can hear you? If, if you guys don't live next to one of these houses, you have no idea. Because during the summer, the wife and I, we were woken up every weekend. They would come in on, on Thursday, and by midnight, the stereo goes up. And it's, it's all weekend long. We were one of those complaints at the same house. We gave up, I don't know, August, because nothing ever happens. And whatever this ordinance is, it's not good enough. Because when you're sleeping, anything will wake you up, and it's always the music. And, and the house next to me, the Californians show up because they all got California license plates, and it's probably eight cars, three boats, and it's just, you know, loud. And even when it's low, it's still loud because you're sleeping. And when you got to get up early in the morning, so it needs to probably be even better with all these decibel things. No one really knows what that is, but when you're sleeping, everything's loud. Yeah, th thank you for your comments. And this, this will be a, a step in the right direction for folks like you that are experiencing this. This will give the tools to the police department so that uh, you can be rest assured that they'll be able to address it. So thank you. Any other comments that called to the pu or a public hearing during the public hearing? All right, we'll go ahead and close the in-person public hearing. Was uh, there a comment, Ms. Williams? Yes, one comment was received today, Tuesday, February 9th, 2021, with a subject line of noise levels in my neighborhood. Every Friday and Saturday night, the music from the bars on McCulloch goes on till 2 a.m., and although I love rock and roll, the bass levels make it very hard to get sleep. Hopefully, when you consider tweaking the noise ordinance at your meeting today, you will consider not only the problem of loud parties in short-term rental properties, but maybe doing something about reducing the decibel levels of the base coming from these establishments as well. Submitted by David Carrera. Thank you. I'll go ahead and close the uh, public hearing. Uh, bring it Mr. back to Mayor. council. Yes, Co uh, Councilmember Dolan. I'll make a motion. Yes. I move to introduce ordinance number 21-1251, amending city code chapter 9.30, noise and section 14.04.09, operation and maintenance standards. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Dolan and a second from Vice Mayor Cope. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we're ready to vote. Councilmember Lynn? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.4 is approved funding agreement with Gold Lake Havasu for the promotion of tourism on behalf of the city. Mr. Knudsen. Uh, good evening again, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, for Council's consideration is a agreement with uh, Gold Lake Havasu, our partner in our tourism promotion activities. The, uh, the city, we have a 3% uh, uh, transient, uh, um, transient tax or a bed tax that's often, obviously uh, often called, and we also have a 1% restaurant and bar tax. Uh, the way the agreement is set up right now is the city uh, uh, collects those funds and then uh, use it, utilizes uh, those, those funds uh, to uh, help assist and, and uh, contract with Gold Lake Havasu. Uh, the 3% uh, bed tax, the 1% restaurant and bar tax, 75% of those funds uh, um, by the city are then distributed to Gold Lake Havasu in return for, again, uh, uh, tourism uh, activities. The contract in, in, in front of you uh, outlines um, a little more clearly in terms of the relationship that the city has and, and the flow of the dollars uh, to the to the contracted uh, um, uh, entity, Gold Lake Havasu, 
and uh, and then outlines the different performance measures of what the city receives um, um, for the for the use of those dollars. Uh, how I explain it quite uh, quite often is that when we have a uh, a resident that, that uh, comes and asks a council member, comes and asks uh, um, somebody on, on staff, um, what does the city do to promote tourism? How do, how do those funds flow? And uh, what does the city get in return for the use of, the, of those dollars? So the intention here is to draft a, an agreement for your consideration that again outlines what the uh, expectations are for the city's use of those, those uh, taxpayer dollars. In return for the, for the dollars, and I'll touch on that in a little bit, is that we're asking again for Go uh, Golden Havasu to attract uh, tourists and, and visitors to Lake Havasu City. Uh, we're asking for them to operate a visitor center, um, coordinate and promote hotel and motel efforts, and coordinate with tourism related agencies and regional partners to promote tourism in Lake, in Lake Havasu City. This is a, a five year agreement that uh, commences on April 1st, 2021, and uh, uh, can be modified or terminated by the city with 120 days notice. You'll I'll see in, in the uh, um, section four of the agreement uh, that really starts on page two is the uh, outlines the, the expectations or what the city receives in return for the contracting with Gold Lake Havasu for again for this this effort. It includes the uh, a monthly report. Um, I, I would ask the council when we get engaged in some, some conver conversations that uh, uh, we, we look at uh, after conversations with Mr. Concannon with the uh, Golic Havasu that's here that, that a quarterly report would probably uh, would, would be uh, um, more beneficial to the city as well as Golic Havasu. Um, so that we'll have that written there too. But it would be a uh, quarterly report and monthly payments is, is the, uh, the intention there. Um, there's a providing a seat on, on the uh, Golic Havasu board for the city manager with voting privileges, a seat on, on, on the board for a, the council liaison as an ex officio um, seat. And they are responsible for presenting to the council once a year, and that would be scheduled in the first quarter of each calendar year. With regards to the, uh, the revenues, um, the, the intent here, which is written in section 2B, um, is the way this agreement is drafted here would exclude the short term rental bed tax from the total collections and the city would retain the, the bed tax collections um, uh, tied to short-term rentals. Some of the conversations we had just had with the noise ordinance, the intention here is that we spend a, a, a lot of resources. On, on the police side, we also spend resources on, on fire and, and, and the parks side, and to a certain degree on the public work side uh, to accommodate tourists and, and visitors that come to Lake Havasu City. So that was the, the intention there is to uh, utilize some of those funds for, for that uh, purpose directly. Um, since the agenda was distributed to, to council, um, we, there originally we had acceptance on, on both on both uh, both parties. Um, but since the uh, the agenda packet was distributed to council, we've had some concerns that came from Golak Havasu. They engaged us with the, with the conversation uh, recently, and uh, um, which provides the council with another option in terms of that revenue stream. Um, so maybe uh, Mary, that you could have maybe explain some of those conversations uh, if you like. Um, but again, in terms of that uh, quarterly reporting, I, I, I'd uh, recommend that we look at that as opposed to the monthly reporting that's uh, presented within the, uh, the contract itself. I'm available for any, uh, any questions. And uh, Terrence Kincannon with Golak Havis, who is uh, in the audience as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Knudsen. Yes, yeah, so uh, Mr. Kincannon, the president and CEO of Golak Havasu, um, uh, engaged with his executive committee and his board um, with uh, an alternative proposal that they would like the, the council to consider uh, tonight uh, while we are having these discussions. So uh, what that uh, would include, um, as Mr. Knudsen mentioned, was currently as contracts written, it's, it's excluding short-term rentals. Uh, they believe uh, that they do have a role in, in the promotion of uh, short-term rentals and that they would like to, to continue a similar formula where they might lower the percentage, but they, they are um, able to take advantage of, of all of the, the current 3% uh, bed tax. So the proposal would be that they would, uh, instead of receiving 75% of the bed tax uh, uh, solely derived from hotels um, and, and resorts within our community, that they would receive 50% of, of all of the current 3% be, uh, bed tax. So it would be a 50-50 split on that front. They would continue to receive 75% uh, of, of the 1% food and beverage tax, which that, that's unchanged as the contract is written in front of you. Um, but um, in return, there would be a cap. 
So the cap would be $1.9 million. So they would not exceed um, $1.9 million in, in one fiscal year to do tours and promotion. Uh, the uh, cap is, is based on the fiscal year 1920 year is what that was paid. They were paid just a little bit more this last year because of, of the um, influx in visitation to our community during the pandemic. Uh, but their board uh, and executive committee is agreeable to a $1.9 million cap. Um, obviously, I don't have to tell you, but we're a tourism-based economy. Tourism promotion is, is so important to, to what we do um, as a community. Um, I believe uh, that this is a fair alternative that they're offering. And um, I would ask for you to consider uh, those options um, in addition to the rest of, of the components of the agreement. So basically, we would, ju we would just change out the payment from 75% from to 50% of, of all bed tax, the 1% food and beverage, which is already in there as written. Um, and then they would um, have a cap of $1.9 million uh, to continue to do tours and promotion. So that uh, is what uh, um, their board is, is uh, comfortable with. And I say that uh, um, in a way that, um, you know, what I find ourselves at is, is I think we're in a, in a good space from a negotiation perspective where um, all sides are coming at it with not exactly what they wanted. And, but it still allows us to move forward um, and be able to do tours and promotion and, and continue to, to invite uh, guests to um, Lake Havasu City. Um, beyond all of this, I'd also like just to remind, just for perspective, that um, uh, everyone pays a 2% city sales tax on goods and services. So when you go to a, a restaurant, um, when you go to uh, a retail store and so on, you're paying 2%. So these visitors are also paying the 2% sales tax. So it's a larger contribution than, than just this narrow focus that we have uh, today that identifies a funding source uh, for, for tourism promotion. Uh, so uh, with that, I, I'd uh, maybe invite uh, Terrence Concanon uh, to the podium if you want to say a few words and then open up to council for, for questions of uh, uh, Mr. Concanon or uh, discussion among the council. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, as you guys know, I am uh, Terrence Concanon, President and CEO of Go Lake Havasu, and I've been proud to have that position uh, since June of 2017. And I feel very comfortable in the job that we have done, and we have exceeded, uh, I believe, the city council's and the citizens' um, uh, expectations of us. In this year alone, our uh, tourism revenue is up 43% year over year. Those are legendary numbers and numbers you won't find in any other community. But I did, there was, I, excuse me, I did meet with some of the uh, city council members and there did seem to be some sort of confusion about some things. So I did want to clar clarify some things for the record. So in the budget, uh, in the fiscal year 2019-20, uh, we spent $1,038,191 uh, $1, in marketing. Uh, in the following year, uh, fiscal year 2021, uh, we spent $1,081,000. Uh, to, uh, in marketing, uh, I did that as a con I made a conscious decision not to raise our, our marketing because we were right in the middle of, of a pandemic. Um, I had no idea that uh, our tourism revenues was, would be as good as they were. Having said that, uh, the best estimate I can give you, and you guys know the numbers for, uh, for sure, is that our tourism revenue in Lake Havasu City in 2020 was around $93 million. Um, so that's a $93 million, that's a 93 uh, percent, a 93 percent one to 93 uh, return. Are we responsible for all that? Absolutely not. Uh, who is responsible for that? Our stakeholders, like our hotels and our restaurants and the fat fantastic city that we have and all the attractions we have. But even if you attribute even 10% of that uh, to Go Lake Havasu, that's still a 10, 10 to one uh, return on our investment. 58% of our funds are spent on marketing. So I run a very tight ship. Um, and we, because of that, we have ref reserve funds, which our city council members have brought up. Um, because I am fiduci fiduciarily responsible to my stakeholders, we have to have reserves. Um, there was somebody that said that we had $2 million in reserves. We do not have $2 million in reserves. We have $2 million in physical and financial assets. Um, that includes, again, uh, physical things, not just money. Um, but we do have reserves because we have to have reserves in order to operate under a situation in which in about three years we're going to have a, a really devast hopefully not, but it's very likely we could have a, a very, very bad recession, depression. Uh, in those situations, my organization needs to be able to continue to spend dollars to market so that we can bring tourists to our community to abate uh, the economic downturn that we will f eventually find ourselves in. 
another reason we have so much money, as many people here on the council are aware, that we had planned and worked with uh, the Partnership for Economic Development and the city uh, for over two years working on the Catalyst Project in which we had proposed the Experience Havasu uh, facility, a children's museum, interactive children's museum, celebrating uh, the history of this city's personal watercraft, uh, which, is, which is, has made this city what it is. Um, I was informed about three months ago through the Partnership of Economic Development that the city no longer wanted, us, wanted our involvement. And at that time, I, 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 I reneged on my letter to, uh, I sent a letter saying we are no longer interested. Uh, so that's why we have so much money. Again, uh, do I feel bad that we have so many reserve funds? No, I'm very proud of that fact. Having said that, uh, Don Callahan, the president on my board, and Chip Chalosky, the future president on my board, have, we have had conversations over the last six or seven months uh, to provide things for the city that the city that we feel the city needs as a tourism destination. I'd just like to quickly go over some of the things because I know some of the city council members weren't aware of some of the things that we do for locals. So in uh, the fiscal year 1920, we spent... Uh, at least $30,000 on Havasu Helps for Hospitality, another $30,000 uh, from the Lake Havasu Hospitality Association to feed our, uh, and help feed our furloughed uh, workers. And I think the number was something like 8,500 people that we fed. Uh, we're f we funded the docks for the Plan C base. I just paid for that at the C plane base at Piccadilly Point. We contributed $10,000, the bulk of the funds for the PWC monument. We provide funding and administration for First Friday's Farmer's Market, Community Youth Market, uh, for the Food Alliance Group, the Restaurant Boot Camp, and the Food Service Cl uh, Compliance Clinics. We funded the seaplane rides on Veterans Day for our veterans. We fund and administer without any help from the taxpayers, the certified tourism, I'm sorry, without any help from other organizations, it is taxpayer money, the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program. Uh, we sponsored the Open Together program with PED in order for our restaurants to open on a, with a standardized, uh, with a standardized uh, uh, collateral, I mean, uh, quality. And we funded, holiday we funded holiday decorations in 2018 when our downtown was lacking holiday decorations. And then we started a Christmas and Halloween decoration contest for the next following years. We brought the Safe Action Project to town so that our hotels and restaurants can recognize uh, exploit human trafficking and exploitation. And we've also made our organization and our visitor center a certified autism center so that those who are on the spectrum and those caregivers can know, know that when they're there, that when they're in our presence, that they will be well cared for because we're trained to, t to care for them. We operate and, re we op and renovated a visitor center at zero cost to the taxpayers. Not, not one taxpayer dollar goes into the operation or the $135,000 remodel of the visitor center. And we spend about $175,000 to $250,000 a year on our events. On top of that, one council member told me that nobody knows what's going on in the city until it's read about in the paper the next day. Uh, I don't know who this council member is talking about, but our calendar of events is our third most view viewed page. And we have about 2.5 million people that go to our website. I will say that this, this funding cut is not something that my board is comfortable with. This, this uh, proposal that Cal laid out is something that I worked out because we don't seem to have any other option. But I will say that this will have an effect on our tourism, uh, on our tourism, not our marketing, I'm not gonna take a dollar from our marketing, but it will affect our ability to fund events and may eventually affect, uh, affect our ability to, uh, to keep the staff members that we have. So we are very, very, very proud to represent this community for tourism. We have done a fantastic job and I am so proud of my staff and the, and the, and the job where they do. I'm also very proud of the city and the city council for taking good care of the city. But I also want everyone to know that tourism, as Cal said, is our bread and butter. And it's something that we cannot take for granted. Thank you for listening to me. I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Concannon. I would bring it back to council and if anyone has any questions for Mr. Concannon, uh, Mr. Knudsen, or just general discussion, council member Campbell. Um, I agree with the uh, overall reduction in the percentage of income in return for co-marketing short-term rentals uh, could be a positive direction for us and further conversation. I would also recommend in case of any future dissolve requesting the board to update bylaws adding Lake Havasu City as a beneficiary of any outstanding account balance balances aka tax dollars just for the future but I'd like to see this um, contract come together so that we can all agree on something we're happy with. I know the staff has put a lot of time and energy into it but after uh, COVID, 
in this pandemic, the last thing I'd want to do is sever any relationship that we have had with the CVB or Go Lake Havasu because I personally in the bar business have enjoyed and appreciated all their websites. I know how much work that is to put it into all the data, the backup, putting on, being an event coordinator for Lake Songwriters Festival. None of that is easy and it takes a lot of volunteers and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of marketing and I respect that and I don't want to lose you guys right now or yeah. have any problems. That's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you. Councilmember Dolan. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, it's an interesting situation. Um, we talk about money, but when I think of the money, it, it's tax dollars. And my, my biggest concern with the CED, CVB and the PED is it's not under our realm of control at, at all. Um, it's tax dollars. What we do have control over is our police, our fire, our water, our streets. Um, you know, I, I, I feel bad, you know, funding cuts and you might have to let people go. I mean, we do that here. And, um, you know, we're, we're on this diocese now and, and in the future talking about, you know, having to raise taxes to cover revenue and you know, to bring more revenue in to cover expenses. And I, I, I find it very concerning that, I mean, these are, these are tax dollars, you know, I mean, it's their budget, I get it, but it's, 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 it's tax dollars and that just keeps going in my head over and over again. So I'm generally okay with this um, because of the cap and that was something I had brought up to Jess too is that I wanted to see that there was an up to limit um, because like I said, if we have a great year and things are going good and you know, there's an extra half million dollars or two million dollars that should go to the city to offset police and fire. Um, I have a lot of respect for Go Lake Havasu and um, you know, tourism is, is a huge part of our community but it's also not the only part and it has to work with the rest of the community. Um, and I think we saw it this year. I mean, Havasu was inundated with, with tourist traffic because we were the only ones that were basically allowing it. So, um, you know, Arizona as a whole. Um, so to me, it's kind of hard to compare it on that space, anything up to this point in this year. But um, like I said, I do feel comfortable with the up to amount. Um, it sounds like the percentages kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, don't really matter. It all comes down to that up to 1.9 million. Um, I do believe we do have a lot of um, uncollected vacation rentals out there, and that's something I think we need to work work towards to, to get. Um, also, too, like I said, coming out of back around, we're talking about raising, raising needing to raise revenue, which is autom not automatically assumed as taxes. Um, and I'm very, I, I do also have a fiduciary duty to the city, too, to make sure that we look at that very seriously. Um, you know, one of the areas I do like is the bed tax. Um, you know, that's something I'm leaning towards in my future is if we do have to raise a tax in an area, I'd like to see it in the bed tax, whether it's two or 3%, but I'd also be hesitant to have us raise that and then we, you know, we have to split it. I, that's raising it to go to the city. So I, like I said, it does come back to that. I'm generally okay with it because of the up to, um, up to the 1.9, it's, we're kind of capping it where it is right now because we're doing really good and it sounds like that's a, a budget we can work at, but like I said, it's just an interesting perspective. We don't have control, you know, like I said, we ask every department to run as efficiently and as, and, and I can tell people, you need to cut services, you need to cut, uh, need to not cut services, you need, to, you need to cut the fat. Well, we're operating at recession levels from the last 10 years. We have equipment, we have fire truck, we have police trucks, uh, police vehicles. There's a lot of equipment, there's a lot of things we need to do. And this last year we did take care of our personnel, which was a long waiting we had to do. So, um, like I said, I just, wish we all keep that in mind that this also plays off the next big decision we have to make as far as you know how we're going to offset revenue in the future so um, like I said generally I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it mainly because the up to amount I think it does protect us should we change something in the future so thanks yeah thank you Councilmember Dolan and I just wanted yes. to say to make sure that you understand that when I said partnering with them with the short term uh, Mr. Cannon and I had talked about marketing in a way that we could educate people about being a good neighbor and moving forward um, with short term letting people know that we do offer short terms but these are our regulations and guidelines and I would really hope that the that our CVB can assist us with that moving forward since this is a market that has a lot of financial potential that's why we're discussing it today that I'd really love their partnership moving forward and of course this is a year to year contract so I just wanted to make sure everybody understood what I'm trying to say that I'd love their partnership moving forward to educate our short terms um, get our short terms uh, taxed and and licensed and all the new regulations we hope are going to go into place from once we get the state 
ordinance to pass. There's a lot of things we need to educate our tourists about, and that's why I'd really like to hold on to this contract um, the best we can and take care of uh, CVB. If I might uh, uh, piggyback on that, I will say that uh, uh, Gold Lake Havasu has, it only once in the three and a half years I've been here, actually advertised short-term vacation rentals, um, and, we, uh, rec uh, and we have only worked with, with uh, organization, I mean, with companies that we recognize are and, and are verified by the city as paying their fair share and, and being good neighbors. Uh, one thing I would like to clarify, though, because I know that the, the police thing is part of this because some of you have brought it up. Um, I was told by city staff that their uh, Airbnb, uh, the short-term home rentals results in a thousand annual uh, police calls. But just a little bit ago, Chief Doyle said it was 300. So I just wondered where the disparity there is, why there's a disparity that there. Was, that was specific to sound. Uh, so 300 of, of uh, nearly 1,000 calls were sound. Different conversation from then just short-term rentals for, for other issues outside of sound. Mm. So, yeah. So, and uh, just real quick, uh, a, shout, a plug for the short-term rentals. It's always been something that's important in Lake Havasu City, so it sounds like we're really bagging on them. We just want to be able to manage them because they really do impact our citizens. Uh, we had a 2014 ordinance that worked fantastic. The chief mentioned it uh, earlier. It uh, worked really great to allow our, our citizens to, to be able to sleep at night um, and allowed us to manage them in an appropriate way. Uh, state law preempted that in 2016, and that's what some of you uh, may hear us refer to where we're, we're working with the state legislature to hopefully get that passed. Uh, but short-term rentals, we always see that as a market mix within our community, um, and many of our citizens rely on that, but it just needs to be managed in a way that uh, there can be peaceful enjoyment from both sides. So, Any other comments, questions from council? Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Council Member Lynn? Yeah, I just have a question. Besides the bed tax, does the CVB, do they receive any revenue from anywhere else? Yeah, besides, they do receive uh, the 1%, 75% of the 1% food and beverage tax and then the bed tax. And then, Mr. Kincannon, do you have any private uh, funds outside of tax dollars? <clears throat> no, except for the tax dollars. The only other revenue we receive, Council Member Lynn, is we operate a booking engine on our website to drive uh, uh, bookings to our hotels. We received like pennies on the dollar for that. I think last year we received maybe 3000 total for, for that, maybe not even that much. Uh, the, other, the only other income source we have are our retail sale, sales of souvenirs and clothing at the visitor center. And I have one other question, yes. and I don't know if you can answer this or not, but have we ever, divide, have we ever divided what tax we're getting on the hotel motels and the vacation rentals? Like, are they separate? Do we know how much we're getting from each one? Yeah, that that's, yes, that's how some of these calculations came to be. So the, the 50% um, um, allocation on bed tax basically takes in into account uh, um, the, the difference between those two numbers. So there, there is some numbers. Obviously, I believe Councilmember Dolan mentioned it. Uh, there's not uh, – we're working on some of the short-term rentals, bringing them into compliance to even comply with the state law that we don't like <laughs> to to pay their, their bed tax. So uh, we do see that there's uh, potential for some upside with that. Uh, Mr. Knutson, I know you're working on that. If you want to um, add anything for, for Councilmember Lynn. Yeah, I can. I can uh, go back to the last, uh, last couple of years, and, and I'm not uh, um, accounting for anything that happened within, like, the last 12 months because the COVID environment is, is going to be an anomaly as we, as we look back, and it better be. Right. Um, but if you look at uh, fiscal year uh, um, 19, so that was uh, July 1st, uh, 2018 through June 30th, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2019, uh, you're looking at a, a hotel tax uh, or the bed tax drive from hotel and motel from for $788,000. And a uh, short term rental at that time was $324,000. That, so that, that was that was fiscal year 2019. If you look at fiscal year uh, 20, it was $776,000 from bed tax derived from hotel and motel operations, and $456,000 from uh, the, uh, short-term rentals. Is that helpful? That was, the qu that was exactly the question. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, to get back to the funding question too, uh, Councilmember Lynn, uh, Gold Lake Havasu has been uh, the successful recipient of grant funding through the Rural Tourism Grants through Arizona Office of Tourism. Uh, so they do apply for, for grants as well uh, that help with uh, tourism promotion. Councilmember Lane. Thank you. And they also run the visitor center and yeah. make a little bit of money off of that as well. As I mentioned. So if I may, I have, I have some comments. Um, so I have, I have issue with the, this whole contract. So um, when this 
tax was approved by the voters, it was that this tax would be used towards tourism related activities and for the Partnership for Economic Development. So that's what, where the money has to go. Um, our city staff is required to negotiate contracts with private companies, which you are a private company. And um, when I was talking to uh, the city manager, and, and my, my question to him was, what does it actually cost to um, market this city? W what are the costs? And I still, to this day, don't have that answer. I don't know what it costs to market the city, the, the lowest level that it costs. Right now, we're all cutting our budgets. We're cutting our police budgets, our fire budgets, our transportation budgets. We're cutting all of our budgets. So we, that may be a place where we need to cut that budget or use some of those funds instead of giving them for uh, marketing to uh, an entity like Go Lake Havasu, use them to uh, supplement our city staff that is having to work on, on these tourism related things as well, such as our roads department doing roadblocks, the police and fire working overtime, uh, and that kind of stuff. So I told uh, the city manager, because he does work for us, that I expected him to negotiate uh, in good faith and to get these answers to these questions, which I still don't have. Um, and then I told him that if we couldn't have this, my recommendation would be we go out to an RFP, a request for proposal, for other agencies to be able to bid on the process. Uh, I think you guys do a good job. Uh, as uh, I mentioned to you when we had our meeting, um, because the negotiations fell apart with the city manager, you guys as a board were not happy with, with those, so you came to council. Uh, I was the one that said people in the city don't know what's happening because people tell me all the time, I wish I'd have known that was happening. I read about it in the paper yesterday. That's how I found out about it. So I'm not saying you do a bad job. What I said at that time was you do a good job, but you could do a better job for the amount of money that we're paying you. So just to clarify that. Um, so it's the city staff that should negotiate contracts, not us. I believe what we have going forward here is we have a contract that our city staff has brought forward to us. We get a vote yes or we vote no. If we vote no, we tell the city staff, go back, renegotiate the contract with these other pieces. And if that falls apart and we can't negotiate that contract, then we go out to an RFP. That's my thoughts. So thank you for your time and thank you for, for meeting with us and, and I look forward to those numbers. Thank you. I actually uh, read the numbers earlier. You asked how much we spend on marketing. Now let me clarify. I didn't ask how much you spend on marketing. I wanted to know how much does it actually cost not how much you actually spend, but what could you get by with having to spend? Since we're all cutting and, and, and not having to spend the amount of money we would like to spend on all of our things, uh, what does it actually cost to market the city? So uh, you said earlier, um, I believe you said it was 1,181,000 was the, the number that you gave. So if it costs $1,181,000 to market the city, why are we paying you 1.9 million? For because those I, ancillary things, because we have, we also about. have to, we also spend, we also fund events to about two hundred fifty thousand. Sure, you do, you you do other things. So yes, those are the 50, questions that fifty-eight like percent of my budget is spent on marketing. We also obviously have other expenses like administration and payroll. So that's where the other part comes. I would I would propose that fifty-eight percent spent on marketing, and the less the lesser amount spent on administration and payroll is a pretty good way to run a, a nonprofit and pretty much any business. And those are the conversations as a as a, somebody that's contracting with the business that you should be talking to city staff about, not city council. We approve the contracts. We don't negotiate them. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Moises, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, sure. Uh, I'd, I'd echo a lot of David's uh, concerns as far as we're not here to negotiate a contract. We're here to approve or disapprove. Um, I, I, too... Asked a couple of questions um, that I didn't feel get got answered. Um, my, the big question I wanted to know is, okay, what is the cost to market the city? Like, not just marketing. What, what, we get it. You have to pay your people and your overhead and all that. What is the actual cost to market the city? And where is that inflection point of where that point of diminishing returns? Where are we 
where after at what point are we spending more money and not getting the same amount of return on our investment? And I never heard that from anybody during any of this because that $1.9 million cap, it's nice. It seems arbitrary. I, I just don't, like, I would love to know where $1.9 million came from. Is just because that's what we've done in the past? I'd really, really like to know where this inflection point is. When, I, <coughs> when I joined the because Bureau. Because that's where our cap should be. How we fund you and where the money comes from and all that, if, if you're doing your job and we're all doing our job, it doesn't matter where we fund you. It doesn't matter. Where's that cap need to be? Does that make sense? Yes. I'm, I, not, I'm not talking about it. Sorry. Yeah. But that's just where I'm coming from. I love the job you guys do down there. I've worked with you guys on a lot of different things, both personally and, and with my business. You guys do a fantastic job. I just want to know where that inflection point is, where we're well, no longer <coughs> getting the bang for our buck. It would be uh, – so Phoenix is the 11th, mar 11th, lar 11th largest market in the country. Las Vegas is about uh, 15th, and the Southern California market is like three or two. Um, if I had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times the amount of money I have right now, if I spent twelve million dollars, I couldn't saturate either any of those markets if I concentrated in one area. Those are massive markets. There are millions of people in Southern California, in Las Vegas, in the state of Arizona. One million dollars sounds like a lot of money, and it is. And I understand. It me sounds like a mo lot of money when the city is, uh, is under, a, uh, uh, under what it is. But literally, there's no way we could, uh, with the funds we have, could we ever reach that point at what, we're, at what we're doing right now. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but it isn't when it comes to tourism. You and I just have a fundamental philosophy difference. Okay. Because I, I believe there is a point. Of, of I, I, get, I get we could spend $12 million, but, uh, but we can't. And, and at what, right. you know what I mean? Right, and I'm not asking the council for it. Right, and, I, I, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. And I, but yeah. and I have a, a visitor survey that we do every five years that shows us how our, stuff, how our work is doing. Yeah. And so let's refer to that. I have, a, I have a question. The fundamental question that I'm asking is, where is our level of success? Like, what do we consider a good market? I mean, I, I think a lot of people know us. I think we're, we, we are doing pretty well, but what's our success rate? I mean, we are a very successful tourism town, but we're also getting a lot of the problems of a tourism town. We, we have a major housing issue. Um, we're having Airbnbs. We have no control over it whatsoever because it's managed at the state level. Where is that success? I mean... Um, you know. ask, ask any of our stakeholders that run restaurants or, or uh, hotels. Yeah, no, I know. I, I'm, I'm one of those. I had a great year just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple great years. But like I said, at what point, you know, I've had great years, but I've also, I'm paying a lot more in payroll, um, not even just minimum wage. You know, I, I have to pay more on top of minimum wage, which is now twelve fifteen because people can't afford to live anywhere. I mean, at what point are we Sedona and people are coming, living in Kingman and Bullhead to come here and work? And I guess that's, like I said, that's my next question is, is what, what, what point do we, you know, $1.9 million in tax dollars, at what point do we just keep putting it back in the system to promote, to keep us at this level? At what point do we keep some of that to, you know, police, fire, housing? I well, I think we're at that point, and that's what we're discussing here. Yeah, so I think that's the concern we're, we're all having. Because my next question, too, is if, like, say, hypothetically, a couple months from now, we decide we want to raise the, the bed tax by one, two, whatever percent, how does that affect this contract? Of course, I mean, if they're still maxed out at 1.9 and we raise it, then they'll pretty much be guaranteed to always get 1.9 because we've raised the limit. Um, yeah, we're talking about uh, the 3% the that's currently there. That so currently, that yeah. This, is, this would be a five-year contract. That would be the 3% that's currently there. The discussion so it wouldn't that affect if we changed it to exactly. – if it went to 5%, they still only get a percentage of the 3%. The 3%. And okay. the um, – wh I think we're, we're there. We're at that point. So – um, you know, Gold Lake Havasu is is doing doing good work. If if we would have had this conversation outside of the contract, let's not even talk about the contract. Let's just talk about the work that Gold Lake Havasu is doing. Everyone, this conversation would would have been different. They're they're they are getting the event information out. They're helping event well, producers. And, and they're doing advertising. They're doing all of these things, and now 
questions from council were saying, well, you know, where is that point of, of equilibrium? Where is that point that we're doing too much? Um, the 1.9 isn't arbitrary. It was it, it, that was looking back historically over the last three or four years, taking the COVID uh, consideration out of it, mm -hmm. um, and that seems that it can be again something that the city can live with. It also could be something that the that Gold Lake Havasu can live with. No one's no one's happy on either side. That means we we did our work. We we, we did an area that all all sides have given given somewhere. Uh, but we have what tourism drives or uh, provides for our community beyond all of this and let's just talk quality of life for a minute people live here because of the great events that we have people mm -hmm. live here because of the great parks and and those systems that we have those are paid for through tourism we need to continue to to foster those relationships not only for our citizens uh but also for for those that are are attracted to come and visit here who then sometimes become our citizens i mean many people that's how they they move here is through tourism so um i mean we got to be mindful of the big picture even though we're talking about some of, of these items here if I can I have one history? If I could just add to that really quick, yes. devil's advocate, is I could say that same about police. I could say the same about fire. We, we forget how important it is to have a, a well-equipped EMS service that provides in the amount of time. If we need to have good parks, they bring people here. We can have that discussion about every department, but if this was, if this was the police department, we'd be telling them, okay, well, I know you operated at 1.9 last year, but this year we need you to operate at 1.8, and guess what, probably the next year we're gonna need you to operate at 1.6. You know, that's, that's where I scenario. need to see this, is it, this is tax dollars, it's not going to, a, to the city department that we have oversight and control over, it's just going to a, where I'm being told, well, it's good, you know, like I said, I'm in business, and I'm, I, marketing is hard, because you never know exactly what you get back, your rate of return. Um, but like I said, I, I, I do have a big concern with the amount of money that we are putting out there when, like I said, we're talking about raising taxes, we're talking about cutting police and fire, and now we're, well, but we need to go like Havasu is really good and they take care of us. Well, so does police and so does fire. And, you know, I, yeah, that, I, I, that, don't I guess that's, that's just my biggest concern. Yeah, is. but this, is, this contract is, is a cut contract. So if you're looking at that, we, the, the contract with PD has been cut and reduced. This contract, that as, as I proposed at the start of this conversation, is a reduced cut contract. How is it? I'm, I'm just confused. How is it cut? If this is the max they've got is 1.9, and they're yeah. So this year they're over two million already. Well, this um, I mean this year out. I mean with the 19 with, is have with they the ever short -term gotten more rental than 1.9? The, with the short-term rental activities that they're going to go after, it's going to be higher than than two million dollars. Yeah, but we're not taking money away from them. We're still we <coughs> we agreed to a right. reduction of 20 20 percent from 75 to 50 uh, 25 percent from 75 to 50 percent. Well, on that's the a reduction tax. in a percentage, but I'm talking about reduction in a budget. What's the most, like on average, have you guys gotten 2 million, 2.1 million a year in the past? No, just this year. Nor okay. Normally we get about be between 1.8 and 1.9. So we've, so we've 1.8, I mean, so this is not a reduction. I mean, we're not, we said funding cut. It's not a funding cut. It's a. Over this year and the additional activities with short-term rental that are projected out. In project, yes. Yeah, and we're reducing the percentage. Yeah. But like I said, it's. I, know, I just have my, it, we're talking about tax dollars. We can talk about their money and fundraising. It, it's, it is tax dollars if we're. Mm -hmm giving it to them, we're gonna have to offset it on the other side. So I, I, I it, it is my big concern, so. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry if I can, in terms of just the numbers, so if you look at the fiscal year uh, 2019 numbers and uh, uh, look at a reduction from 75% to 50% of the bed tax collections, uh, that would be a difference of about $278,000 in the, the 20, 2019 fiscal year. At that time, uh, uh, the city um, took, used taxpayer dollars to the tune of $1.855 million. And, and uh, that went to uh, Gold Lake Havasu. And then in fiscal year uh, 2020, it, the uh, city taxpayer dollars that went to flow through to Gold Lake Havasu was $1.9 million. And um, looking at, uh, based on that, a uh, reduction from 75% to 50% uh, in real dollars, that'd be $308,000. Correct. Thank and you. And one quick, hi yeah, um, quick history tip. Uh, is this was voted on by the people a long time ago, am I correct? Like this was, we took this vote to the people. No. They made the decision, no, that's not correct. I, I just wanted to make sure that was right. So it's incorrect. It was just council made the decision to use the money accordingly. Yeah, Ms. Gary, do you wanna address yeah. that? Yes, so as far as establishing the tax percentages, that was done by council and that's codified in the city code. Okay. The distribution of that money, whether it's 75% or 25% to whomever, that was an administrative decision made by council. And okay. so that is something that has been continued by contractually throughout the years. Thank you, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. 
Any other questions, comments, thoughts before we open up the public hearing? Councilmember Lane. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I actually agree with, with what you're saying when it comes to the contract. Uh, there needs to be a contract, but it needs to be a contract that it's negotiated in good faith between Go Lake Havasu and city staff. We're, we're sitting here like negotiating a contract and that's not our job. We shouldn't be doing that. We're undermining city staff. And so um, I believe it should go back to them back to the staff if we want to look at that or as I said before um, go to an RFP and have other marketing companies also bid on the on the job uh, would I hate to, to lose them absolutely we've got a great relationship going but to what councilman Moses was saying if we spend a million dollars on marketing and we can show that we have a 10 million dollar return on investment that's wonderful but now we say we spend $2 million and the return on investment is $11 million. Well, we're getting a million dollars back for a million dollars spent. That's not a good return on investment. So maybe we need to dial that part back. So, um, but that's negotiations that, that should be being had <coughs> with, with city staff, in my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. And Mr. Knudsen, are you comfortable uh, with uh, the conversation that you had with uh, Mr. Concanon as uh, presented uh, uh, that I laid out with a cap of 1.9, 50-50 uh, split uh, within your negotiation uh, that you had with him through this process? Um, certainly the, uh, the process uh, was a little unique <laughs> uh, moving forward. So initially a conversation took place between myself and, and Mr. Concannon and, and sat down and, and uh, talked a few things over and uh, essentially got to the point where we were able to have a gentleman's agreement and then be able to present those, uh, uh, present those ideas on, on, uh, on from a written document perspective, um, got a nod to, to move forward in that aspect, so that's why it's sitting on the uh, on the the agenda um, for you uh, th this evening. I think in terms of conversations, that uh, trying to figure out a way to for both sides or both parties to be equally unhappy. I think <laughs> we've we've accomplished that. Um, is, so <laughs> I think if, if that's our goal, um, but I do respect the fact that it's uh, my job is is uh, very difficult in terms of negotiating a contract. So I have. Um, seven, a mayor and seven council members, a vice mayor and, and five council members. Um, and, and I do my best to try to have uh, conversations and get to know uh, where the perspective are, where the goals are, what the vision is, and what next steps are uh, based on all the information that, that I'm providing you know, to, uh, to the council. Um, and then I take that information and I utilize that to have a conversation with uh, Gola Cabasu or any other contract that I, I, I negotiate with. And it uh, does get difficult, so I greatly respect the... Uh, uh, the, the comments in terms of uh, um, throwing that those conversations back towards my way because my job is difficult and and uh, those that that, uh, uh, that approach is, is nearly impossible so I, I, I do appreciate the uh, the uh, um, that approach that being said I think that in terms of the uh, what the council is uh, is uh, looking to accomplish I'm comfortable with uh, council considering um, in my mind we're, we're now at a point where council is considering option a or option B and I think that uh, if council's comfortable with, uh, with option A or option B and looking at it from that perspective, um, I'm, I'm comfortable moving, moving forward with in that direction. Councilman Merlin? Yeah, if I may ask one more question. Yes. If we send this back to um, the city manager, um, how long do you think it would take for you and Mr. Concanyon can weigh on here if he would like to actually negotiate a contract that you could bring back to council that Maybe everybody doesn't get what they want, but it's, it's fair and equitable to uh, everybody, including the taxpayers of Lake Havasu City. Well, that's what we have I here. Think we've so done that. that's what we have with option A or option B. So, yeah, yeah so that, okay. that we, we can. Uh, so uh, we negotiated the contract? No. Yeah, I mean, no, this, this is a, we have option A or option B, and, and uh, by, by motion or by discussion, uh, give uh, the city manager uh, direction. So. Vice Mayor Cook, did you have a comment or a thought? Um, I, I do have a couple comments. Yes. Um, I was kind of waiting. A um, lot of uh, time spent in that office, um, and so I don't need to – I know what happened there. I, I know the process. Um, I, am, I've see, I saw a lot of contracts uh, before my time on council um, be negotiated, and, and it's disappointing that this is how this went down. I feel like this is something that I know in my discussions with the city manager over the past months that this has been worked on. And then it's to be worked on with the city manager and brought to us and then not to come to us five days before council individually to certain members 
to be visited with to try to negotiate outside of the, the process. I respect the process. I respect the organization. I have no problem with that. But it, it was gone about all wrong. And that is not how we operate business. And I, I apologize if I sound upset, but we have a process in place. And, and Jess's job is hard enough. And we have hard decisions to make up here, too. And to go and go about things out of order and on the wrong way, it's it undermines the whole process, and it's disappointing. And you know, no, nobody's going to be happy. Um, tourism is really important to Lake Havasu City. I know that, and I know the job that the organization does is very important. We've partnered with you for a long time uh, to do our work in the in the tourism realm. Uh, maybe agreed, maybe not agree all the time on where the money was spent. I, that's not my level of expertise. Um, but we do have a, a responsibility to do financially sound decision making up here. And, um, you know, we need to feel good about those decisions at the end of the day. And I will tell you, uh, you may not remember it now, um, and those of us sitting back here will remember vividly on years of election, we get hammered on what we do for economic development and what we do for tourism. And they hold us accountable. And they may not hold us accountable the other three years, but the one year when we're running for office, they sure do. And those questions are tough. And we need to be able to answer those, those questions. And we need to have facts and figures and to have our questions answered when we come to you or if you come to us and we ask those questions. Because we those are hard questions and we get them every time. So um, I'm going to go out on a limb and, and ask for a mo to make a motion. Uh, Vice Mr. Mayor, Mayor I, Mr. Mayor, I, have I do a need question. to open up the public okay. hearing. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor Koch. Uh, Vice Mayor, or excuse me, uh, Councilmember Lynn. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think what we're really talking about here a lot is accountability and, and holding them accountable for what we're, we're getting the best bang for our buck. So when I was looking at the contract under the board item in the, um, Part of it is to provide the manager with a written monthly report and then that's on number four and then number 12 is to present annually to the city council i mean maybe we could improve that if they were reporting more often to us i mean maybe twice a year i'd like to see quarterly my opinion because if you're you know we're having them gather everything put everything together us and tell us a year from now maybe we should if that's what it's all about holding them accountable then maybe we should have them present to us more often Council Member Lynn, I will I will present to this to this council at any time you guys request me. Yeah, thank you, Council Member Lynn. I'd also like to say one more thing uh, to Council Member Koch. You're absolutely right. Uh, it was not my intention to circumvent this process or to step on anybody's toes. Um, it was I was directed by my executive council, council to reach out to board members as best I could to educate them about some of the things we do. Um, and I obviously felt too comfortable with city council members, and I brought up the contract. So I do apologize for 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 circumventing the process. All right. This is uh, Councilmember Dolan. Did you? Have I like to make one more comment. Yes. <laughs> Bad for everybody. Oh my God, I can't believe we're buying into that crap. This is not how it should be done. Like, it's bad for everybody, so we're okay with it. Like, this is, I mean, I, I always do my best to come into every meeting, not make up my mind until I hear everything. I'm a no, <laughs> like, I'm a strong no. I mean, I sat down with Terrence, who I have respect for as, as, as a, in what he does, but I mean, I was basically told, yeah, I presented this to four other council members and they all think it's great, so I don't want to tell you what we do, you know, so I've already been told there's four other council members that are on board with this and I, I don't like that. I don't like the way we got played. I don't like the way that, you know, I'm hearing rumors that this went to the board and they approved it until they realized what the fine print was because they didn't have a copy and I, I don't know, I'm not having the greatest confidence in this right now and then I get with, well, it's bad for everybody, so it's good. We're raising taxes this year, and I have a big issue with that. And I'm, I don't know, I, this is, this has been eye-opening to me, and I'm, I'm pretty concerned that we're circumventing around the city manager. And so whatever motion you want to put out there, I pretty strong feeling where I am at the moment. So, Well, just to let you know, anything that we talked about, this contract is not even where close to what we were talking about. And Jess was very well of well aware of everything we talked about so if you feel that we were doing something behind your back um being in being asked no, it to wasn't, go it to wasn't council meeting. of course we can't do that with open meeting laws but other people outside the city can talk to us and give us right. information but that was I, it that's how it was printed to me as well four and people I didn't are already speak on board to anybody with else. this like we know it's basic around here if you can count to four 
you know. So I, I, I don't know. It's bad right. for everybody, I Any guess. Any other uh, questions, uh, comments or thoughts, uh, Miss Gary? Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't, uh, with the microphone, okay. All right, uh, uh, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Just make your way to the podium, state your name uh, for the record. Seeing none, we'll close the in-person public hearing. Uh, Ms. Williams, did we receive any written comments on this item? No written comments. Okay. <coughs> uh, bring it back to council for any final questions or comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Lane, or excuse me, Vice Mayor uh, Koch, would you still uh, be? No, he's, he was looking right at me. You know, <laughs> so as I looked over there, so I'm sorry. So Vice Mayor Koch, would, uh, um, are, you, are you still um, open to making a motion? Well, I, I just, I, I feel like we are, <sighs> We're at an impasse here, and I, I want there to be enough education on the, the whole process, and I want people to be comfortable to make a decision. Um, you know, you hate to kick the can down the road, but maybe tonight isn't the night for this. Maybe people need to be more educated. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I need a minute. Vice right. Mayor, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm council member now. Council member Lane. Uh, that was my question. If if we did do exactly what Vice Mayor Koch said, how long could would it take you to get a contract back together that is comfortable for both sides, negotiated in good faith on both sides, and bring it back to the council mm -hmm. so that we can study it and be a lot more comfortable with this? Because right now, I think the majority of the people up here are not comfortable. Council Berlin, <laughs> Mayor, um, from my perspective, it uh, on the city side, it uh, could be a said and done in, in uh, 30 days. Agreed. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. may I make a motion? Sure. That we table this to come back before the council on March the 9th. So we have a, a motion from Councilman Berlin. Uh, is there a second on that? Second. And a second from uh, Councilman Berlin. Uh, before we take uh, a vote on what that motion looks like, uh, we're here to do uh, the people's business. We, we've had opportunities to have conversations with people. Um, I, I think we should finish today's work. Uh, we, I don't believe there's going to be anything that's going to come out of, of this from the discussions we've had uh, throughout this evening. Uh, those are my thoughts. I don't know if anyone else has any comments before we go to, to a vote on that. I would, Mr. Mayor, I know there's been uh, back and forth and all that. We, me personally, I have nothing but the utmost respect for the work that Mr. Con Cannon and Go Lake Havasu does. We appreciate what you do. We, I appreciate uh, all the questions that all the council members have had. Um, but as I said, I just don't think we're where we need to be before we can approve or disapprove a contract right now. So we have a motion for March 9th and are we, that's the motion on the table right now. The discussion would be possibly picking A or B is that? No, so this would It's be, just a motion. This is a motion to table this item, uh, take it back to okay. Mr. Knudsen. Okay, there's a motion in a second though, yes, correct? there is okay. a motion in a second. Okay. Um, what I should, can I amend that motion to say to the first council meeting in the month of March? I'm pretty sure it's March 9th, but but just to, to make sure that the first council meeting in March in case it gets changed for whatever reason. Are you comfortable with that, uh, Council Member Lynn? For your yes. second? Ms. Gary, are you comfortable with the, the motion as, as on, on the floor? Okay. All right, so we do have a motion uh, to uh, table on uh, the floor uh, by Council Member Lane and a second from Council Member Lynn. I believe we're ready to vote. Uh, Council Member Lynn, sorry. Sorry, I didn't know if I had to say I again. I. <laughs> Motion carries four to three. All right, uh, thank you uh, very much. We'll bring that back on the March 9th meeting uh, for uh, consideration. Moving on to item 8.5 is approve and ratify the use of general fund contingency for costs associated with the failure and replacement of the emergency generator at the police facility. Chief. Mayor, Council. What I'm looking for on this is approval to use contingency funds to uh, ratify expenses that we've already incurred as well as approve uh, replacement of a generator. In December, we had a failure of our transfer switch, which uh, 
transfers it, the loss of uh, mainline power, it transfers power over and starts our generator, uh, which basically powers our uh, 911 dispatch center as well as our city server room. Uh, the, we immediately had to have a, a rent a temporary transfer switch and um, we were having difficulty with our generator at the time and we had to uh, pay for a uh, temporary uh, uh, generator to, to stand by until we could uh, get uh, repairs made. Uh, we had the transfer switch replaced um, and as part of that process when maintenance services came in and, and facilitated uh, this whole process, the, we were advised that we had a lot of obsolete parts on our generator, which is 27 years old now. It's the original generator that came with the building. So what I'm asking for is funds from contingency not to exceed $105,000 uh, for uh, the failure and replacement of our emergency generator. We've um, already, um, we've already uh, spent approximately $25,543.39, uh, which we're asking to be ratified, and then the approval for another $78,482.80 for the replacement of the actual generator and associated systems. Thank you, Chief. Are there any questions of Chief Doyle on this item? Great job explaining it. Well, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the in-person public hearing. Uh, is there any written comments, Ms. Williams? No written comments. Okay, thank you. Bring it back to council for further discussion or motion. Mayor. Yeah, Vice Mayor Koch. Motion. Yes. I move to ratify the use of general fund contingency for costs associated with the failure of the police facility generator and approve the use of general fund contingency to award quotes for costs associated with the installation of a new emergency generator at the police facility, utilizing in part the active cooperative purchase, hold on, next page, agreement with Empire Power Systems not to exceed a total of $105,000. I'll second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Koch and a second from Council Member Moses. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Council Member Lynn? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.6 is ratify expenditures exceeding $50,000 with Hills Brother, Hill Brothers Chemical Company for order control chemical sodium hypochlorite 12.5% liquid bleach for the North Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Mulberry Wastewater Treatment Plant. Mr. Frosley. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of council, what this item is, as you just indicated, is a ratification of expenditures exceeding 50,000. Uh, typically, my preference would be to be here before we exceed that 50,000 limit and actually ask, ask your permission to do so. That didn't happen this time. We unfortunately have experienced some mechanical failures with the chemical feed equipment at two of our treatment plants. Uh, when those went down, the, the liquid bleach tanks emptied on a number of occasions. It really just basically caused us to use more liquid bleach than we typically would at, through this time of the fiscal year. So we've purchased um, the bleach. Um, we're asking for ratification of the extra expenditures. It, it'll be total for the year approximately seventy-five or eighty thousand, so only twenty-five or, or thirty thousand over the fifty thousand dollar threshold. I'm happy to answer any questions. Excellent, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Knudsen. Uh, if I can, uh, Greg, you made mention about the the failure of the equipment and the need for the replacement of the equipment and moving forward, um, which then at that we need to take that equipment offline up to about uh, oh. about, about a week or so. Sure. So um, we'll have some press releases uh, forthcoming to let the the, uh, the neighbors know that uh, without any order control for that uh, time period, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna receive phone calls and council's gonna receive I, phone calls. I appreciate that. Uh, a little more detail. We we've already repaired the north plant. Uh, odor control system. The odor control system at Mulberry was actually in our approved budget as a plan B item and we almost made it. That money was just released earlier, I guess last month now. So we're in emergency status right now uh, ordering equipment and we're going to be taking the odor control offline for approximately one week at the Mulberry treatment plant which is going to cause odors in the neighborhood. So we will be doing a press release with that timeline to make sure everybody's aware. Um, but you may get, get some phone calls. It, it's about a five to seven day uh, 
total uh, time period that we'll be offline while we uh, install new equipment for odor control. Thank you, city manager. Thank you. Any, any other, any questions for Mr. Frosley? Yeah, so this uh, uh, city code uh, dictate, dictates items come before council if we spend more than $50,000 with one vendor, that's why we're here. Uh, there is money in the budget for, for this particular item, so. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the in-person public hearing. Uh, Ms. Williams, we didn't receive any items for this either? No written comments. Okay, thank you. All right, bring it back to council for discussion or a possible motion. Yeah, council member Moses. Uh, I motion, uh, I, t I move to ratify and approve expenditures exceeding $50,000 with Hills Brothers Chemical Company for odor control chemical sodium hypochlorite to 5.5% liquid bleach for the North Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Mulberry Wastewater Treatment Plant. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Moses and a second from Councilmember Dolan. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Councilmember Lynn? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item nine is uh, current events. Do we have any council committee reports? Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Councilmember Lane. Thank you, sir. Well, Mr. Mayor, in March of 2020, you asked me to coordinate assistance to the community due to COVID-19. And out of that conversation, the LHC Resource Alliance was established by combining efforts of the city, the Cavasu Area Chamber of Commerce, Havasu Community Health Foundation, Better Business Bureau, and River Cities United Way. We came together and started with a $10,000 donation from a local business. We thought we would run this program for a month or two and then be past this pandemic. Here we are 11 months later. We are out of funds. We've completed our current mission. This will be our last update with the numbers as of today. Through River Cities United Way, we received donations of over $333,000, including the $250,000 of CARES Act dollars that the city contributed. With that funding, we were able to help 80 businesses and 226 individuals with grants to help pay bills such as rent, utilities, car payments, mortgage, insurance, even gas cards so that they were able to get back and forth to work. All bills were paid directly to ensure the money was being used for the intended purpose, help people keep their heads above water while they maneuvered through this crisis. In addition to those monies, the Better Business Bureau awarded grants between $500 and $1,000 to 18 local businesses to help them keep the doors open and the lights on. The Havasu Community Health Foundation Food Bank distributed $1 million 23,746 pounds of food during these last 11 months, and that was a 23% increase in first-time users for their service. They've also started a home delivery service that they plan to continue to help those that can't leave home that are shut in so that they have an option for nutritious meals. The Lake Havasu Area Chamber of Commerce was open for our local businesses throughout these 11 months and fielded untold numbers of telephone calls helping scared business owners maneuver through the maze of assistance programs that are in place. We would like to thank our city staff for helping us keep the information on the website, developing videos, and answering the calls that came to the city. The staff of all the agencies involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the Alliance and their boards for allowing the directors and staff to work on this project. But most importantly, we would like to thank the numerous businesses and individuals who donated their money to assist those that needed help in our community. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes my final report for the LHC Resource Alliance. Yeah, thank you, Councilmember Lane, and thank you for your leadership on that. On behalf of Lake Havasu City, you really answered the call and helped uh, hundreds of, of our citizens at a really tough time, and I appreciate all that you've done. Um, and, and a big thank you to the partner organizations, the Havasu Community Health Foundation, Better Business Bureau of Arizona, Lake Havasu, City, uh, Lake Havasu Area Chamber of Commerce, and the United River Cities United Way. So thank you uh, to those partner agencies. Uh, their, their help was invaluable to, to make sure that our citizens had the resources that they need needed through this pandemic. So, and, and again, thank you, Councilmember Lane, for all your work. Any other council committee reports? I'll just give a quick update uh, from the MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, the director, Vinny Gallego, has uh, accepted a position in central Arizona and will be leaving us. So you may see uh, a request
recruitment efforts for uh, a new director for the MPO. Uh, we wish uh, Mr. Gallegos um, all of uh, the luck and success and, and uh, good wishes as he goes on to his next journey, but uh, uh, we'll be seeing some replacements in that area uh, soon. All right, no other council committee reports. We'll move on to uh, future meetings. On uh, Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021 at 6 p.m., we'll have a regular meeting. And then on Tuesday, March 9th, 2021 at 6 p.m., we will also have a regular meeting. Uh, is there any future discussion items from any of the council members? All right, and entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, Mr. Mayor, one more thing before we, before we adjourn. Yes. Today's my wife's birthday, and so for, um, for her birthday evening, she got to sit through the city council meeting. So uh, happy birthday to my beautiful wife sitting out in the audience. And yes, with that, happy I birthday. Would... Yes, and thank you for joining us on your birthday. All right. Motion and... Yes. So moved. Excellent. We have a motion and a second to uh, adjourn. Uh, be kind to everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening.